Normal distribution is one of the harder topics in S1 and many students get really confused by all these tables and all these numbers and these graphs and all of these inequalities as well. So it can get very confusing. Now there's, I'm sure there's out there a very long detailed discussion about what it all means and maybe we could talk about that one day. But for this video, I'm just going to give you a few key tips, like shortcuts for getting the good answer, getting the right answer, getting the good marks and a few questions to think about as well, which we'll come to. So in a normal distribution question, you will always need to check the back and you'll see these two charts here and here and we're going to need to know them. But first, what is a normal distribution very quickly? It's basically where the average would be in the middle of something and that's where most people are and with a few people down here and a few people really above the mean. So the middle bit is the mean and any distribution where most people are around the mean with a few people being much higher or a few people being much lower that's called a normal distribution it's quite normal just like heights there's an average height in your class or your school and there's a few people much taller a few people much shorter so that would be a normal distribution this is also known as a bell curve and comes in all the time in economics and all sorts of other fields so it's really quite important to know about and the question would look something like this. Well, it's a starting question, then later videos I'll do harder questions. Use the tables to find the probability of Z being less than 1.52 standard deviations. Now, whoa, 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 what am I talking about? Well, the middle of this normal distribution is the mean. And for a normal distribution, why it's called normal, is because we're going to call the mean as being zero. That's the first number here. That just means is distributed normally with the mean at zero and the standard deviation is the number that's being squared. So here it's one squared. What that means is each one of these goes up in one standard deviation. So this is one standard deviation above the mean, one standard deviation below, three standard deviations above, etc. And you'll notice that very, very few people are three standard deviations above something or below something. It's almost always 0 point something or 1 point something or sometimes 2 point something. So if your answer is seven standard deviations, you, you know you're going wrong somewhere. Now, how do we use these tables? Well, the first thing that a lot of students get wrong is they get mixed up between these two rows. The first row is the standard deviation, these two decimal places. One way you can remember that is that probabilities never go beyond zero, do they? Yet yeah, this table on the left, this column, or these columns, the Zs, they go way beyond one. So these must be the standard deviation. So this would be 1.28 standard deviations above. What does the number on the right mean? It means the probability of being anything up to that over the mean. So for example, let's pick a random number right here. So here it says 1.4 standard deviations above the mean. Let's quickly find that. I'm gonna highlight that so you can see which one I'm talking about. Let's find that on our graph. 1.4 standard deviations above the mean would be about here. So what does this number 0.9192 mean? Translated into a percentage, that would be 91.92%. That means the chances of being up to that line, so not just here, but all of anything to the left of that, would be almost 92%, 91.92%. As in there's very few people, roughly 8 or 9% of people, who are more than 1.4 standard deviations above the mean. Remember, on the left, standard deviation. On the right, probability. If you remember that, you're almost halfway to getting these kind of questions right. Okay, let's go back. There's a few other things we need to bear in mind as well. We need to bear in mind if we're looking at the big area or the small area. So in this question, how did I know that it was to the left? Well, because this is always to the left. These, these probabilities are always to the left, so it's going to be the big bit over here 
which makes sense. It's 92%, it's this big area. But when we come to these questions, you'll see we're going to need to decide sometimes, is it to the left, do they want the big bit, or do they want the small bit? Do they want more than, or do they want less than? That's something you have to decide. So let's actually get to a question to show you what I'm talking about. The question might be, use the tables to find the probability that a person is less than 1.52 standard deviations above the mean. What you do is you go to standard deviations and you go to this chart over here, the one on the left, and we're going to look for 1.52 and I can see it here. This is 1.52 and that would be 0.9351 and looking at our graph which you can draw, you can draw one yourself, 1.52 would be here. So it would make sense if roughly 93.5% of people are to the left of that. How did I know it was to the left? Because it said less than 1.52. That's any number to the left of this. Minus 1 is less than 1.52. 1 is less than 1.52. So we answered the first question, do they want the big bit or the small bit? They must want the big bit because these are all the numbers less than 1.52. So it makes sense the answer would be 0.9357, looking at, at our tables, 0.9357. Okay, let's do the next question. I'm going to have to erase what I just did so we get a fresh graph again. The probability that Z is bigger than 2.6 standard deviations. So let's find 2.6 standard deviations just so we get a rough sense of what we're doing. 2.6 would be about here. Do they want the big area, which is to the left, or the small area? Well, they said bigger than 2.6. So that's that tiny area over here. Now, if we look at the tables and go to 2.6, we see that it says 0.9953. Now, that is not a small area. 0.99 Five, three is almost the entire graph that's 99.53 percent so can you guess what we need to do to find the small area what you'd need to do is you need to do one minus that so one take away 0 0.9953 and a little tip I've put down here on the right you're going to need to get used to doing one minus something that comes up so much in normal distribution how did we know it was one minus because it said greater than 2.6 and that's a very small area so it's a little trick that you're going to know it's going to be 1 minus because we need a very small area and 0.9953 is a huge area that's almost the entire thing this would be 0.0047 I believe if I've done my maths correctly let's do the next question and again I'm going to erase that so we can get to the next question the probability of Z being less than minus 0.75. My tip, if we've got our graph, is find this and then shade in what we need so we can get a rough idea of what we're looking for. Minus 0.75 would be about here, just beneath 1. Did it want more than or less than? It wanted less than. So that's to the left of that. So this is actually a small area. It is not the big, it's not the majority of the graph, it's actually a fairly small area. So let's bear that in mind. Let's look for 0 0.75. Ah, it's not on here. So what do we do if it's not on here? That's where the third question comes in, plus or minus. Because we can't find, and you'll never be able to find any minus numbers on here, you have to look for the plus version. So we're going to look for plus 0 0.75. Just before we go on, let's put an even bigger reminder. It's one minus that we almost always have to do. Now let's look up 0 0.75 in the table. The probability is 0 0.7734, right here, 0 0.7734. Now let me ask you a question. Have we just worked out, by looking at that number, the green bit or the white bit? I'll let you think about that. Have we just worked out the green bit or the white bit? We looked up 0.75 in the table and we got this probability. Now is that the green bit or the white bit? 
that would actually be the white bit because that's more than half isn't it 77 percent is way more than 50 percent so it's more than half so we've just worked out the white bit how do you reckon we're going to get the green bit there's a reason i try to make the reminder even bigger is because we need to do one minus this number one minus 0.7734 to work out the green bit that's almost always the trick with normal distribution taking that away i believe you get 0.2266 and that is the green area just to recap what you need to do is find these standard deviations in the table work out whether they want the small bit or the big bit usually by doing a graph and then do one minus if you need to let's use all those tricks now for one of these hard questions like question d okay so they want the probability of z being between minus 1.18 and 1.43 okay let's do that on our graph minus 1.18 i believe would be about here minus 1.18 would be about here and 1.43 would be here 1.43 so they want in between these two so they want this blue area here whoops not the whole thing this blue area here if i shade it in okay how do you reckon we're going to find this blue area well my strategy is going to be to find the area bigger than it so this small area let's see if i can shade that in in yellow that small area and this small area and then everything under the graph adds up to what everything under the graph adds up to one so if i can find the two yellow bits to get the blue bit i'll just do one minus those two yellow bits now you're wondering how do we find the yellow bit so let's do this what do you think step number one is if you said look this up in the tables you're right can we look up minus 1.18 no so we look up 1.18 which is here 0 0.8810 let's make a note of that so for this one it was 0 0.8810 now we make the decision is that the big area or the small area so is that this bit because remember here's minus 1.18 is that this yellow bit or all the rest of it that's got to be all the rest of it because that's way bigger than half that's definitely not this yellow bit to the left of minus 1.18 how do you reckon we're going to find this yellow bit if you said one minus you're right one minus 8810 we keep using the fact that probabilities add up to one to our advantage that would be 0 0.119 i believe let's do the other one you might want to pause the video and have a go at this one yourself remember we're trying to find this yellow area here because then we're going to add up the two yellow bits and take it away from one to find the blue bit because it was in between do you want to try and find that one this yellow bit okay if you just um, finished pausing the video 1.43 if we look up in the tables is here 0 0.9236 0 0.9236 have we just found the yellow bit no because that's way bigger than half that's all the rest of it everything less than 1.43 standard deviations that's all of this bit how do we find the little yellow bit one take away that number one take away that number which i believe would be 0 0.764 i think if we add those two yellow bits together the 0 0.0764 and the 0 0.119 we can see what all the yellow bits add up to and that answer i won't try any more mental maths is 0 0.1954 if you add those together it equals 0 0.1954 can you guess what we do now that we've worked out what the two yellow bits add up to to find the blue bit if you guessed one minus you'd be absolutely right just to translate it into english we've worked out that the probability of being more than 1.43 standard deviations 
is 7.64%. The chances of being less than minus 1.18 standard deviations is 11.9%. Adding those up, we've got 19.54%. By the way, you just times by 100 to convert into a percentage. And so if we simply do one, take away that answer, we will indeed have the blue bit because all probabilities add up to one. And that is 0 0.8046. 0 0.8046. And that seemed really hard, especially towards the end. So you might want to review the steps I did there. But to cut a very long story short, it involved looking things up in the table and using one minus. And later videos will cover tougher examples, but if you can cling to those two steps, check the tables, understand the difference between standard deviation and probability, and do one minus, you'll be fine.